Hey guys, what's going on? I'm playing back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about JJ and E. JJ and E, also known by its original title Vinterviken, is a Swedish romance movie that tells a story of two characters who are destined to fall in love with each other, respectively named Jan Jan and Elizabeth. Jan Jan is essentially the main character of the story and is portrayed as someone who comes from the other side of the tracks, so to speak. He gets good grades in school, but tends to hang out with the wrong crowd of friends, and as a result, he gets associated with a variety of crimes throughout his town. Fortunately though, his grades are good enough that he's able to achieve his dreams of going to drama school. And it's at this drama school that Yan Yan is able to meet up and spend a lot of time with Elizabeth at over the course of the movie. They do get introduced to each other earlier in the story, but it's not until they both see each other at drama school that things really start to kick off. And as you can imagine from this type of story, lots of things develop from there. They develop a rapport with each other, they spend a lot of time with each other, they fall in love with each other, they get into fights with each other, etc. If it sounds like I'm not very excited to review this movie, it's because it's the most ordinary and boring and blasé type of romance movie you could possibly watch. The characters that are featured in its story are little more than walking and talking stereotypes. Of the two main characters, I would say that Yan Yan is the more interesting of the two, just because we get to see a lot more of his family backstory develop over the course of the movie, has a friendly and optimistic personality, and in general the conflicts that he undergoes throughout the story are a lot more interesting in comparison to Elizabeth. This being said though, Yan Yan's characterization is not without flaws. I like the relationship that he has with his mother and how it develops over the course of the story, but the one that he had with his stepfather, if you can call him that, made no sense to me whatsoever. It's obvious that the filmmakers were trying to portray him as being unhelpful and even antagonistic toward Yan Yan's and his aspirations of going to drama school, but there are also times when he tries to be a helpful role model as well, so I never got the sense that the filmmakers had any idea of what to do with that stepfather character. In general, there's a lot of flakiness associated with Yan Yan as a character. His passion is supposed to be drama, but he rarely engages in it outside of school hours, and he clearly isn't interested in participating in any of the acts of thievery that he and his friends commit in town, and yet he continues doing it anyway, up to the end of the movie. So as a result, there's pretty much no character development for him throughout the story, and thus very little reason to care about him as a character. Elizabeth is definitely the weaker of the two when it comes to overall characterization. She pretty much exists just to be a romantic interest for Yan Yan. I think there was a lot of potential for her character based on what was there, but ultimately it ends up being squandered. She spends the majority of the movie being depressed and not really doing anything interesting. It's supposed to be because she's reeling from the loss of her mother who died from cancer a few months before this movie story takes place. Though it's only ever brought up a couple times and never long enough for us to get a sense of how her mother's death is truly affecting her. It's clear to me that there was some sort of angle set in place at the beginning of this movie to make it seem like Elizabeth wasn't really into the drama school, you know, sort of being out of her element, and I would have loved the filmmakers to do more with that premise, but the movie never takes full advantage of it. It mostly just relegates her to being a love interest that tags along with Yan Yan wherever he goes. The romance in this movie is ordinary in its approach to the point of boredom. I could go in detail about how predictable it is bit by bit and scene by scene, but honestly, there's very little point in discussing it. That's not to say that the two didn't have their fair share of cute moments here and there throughout the story. They do quite a few fun things together, like when Elizabeth invites Yan Yan to her sister's birthday party and how he ends up bringing over a present for her, and also when the two go to a rave party together and essentially confess their feelings for each other without using any dialogue at all. Those were both good scenes that I really enjoyed. But then there's also the sappy cliche stuff that you really hate to see, like both of them lurking on each other's Instagram pages at the same time when they're not around each other, and then both of them will end up scheduling a date and one of them ends up missing it due to circumstances beyond their control, and then the other person ends up thinking that that other person isn't interested in them anymore. The movie is so predictable in its approach to romance that I was honestly irritated at times. I feel like there's something else I should be saying about the romance in this movie, but I'm struggling to think of anything else. It's not horrible per se, but ultimately it's forgettable, and for a movie that's supposed to be a romance, that is not a good thing. The movie has a mix of other good and bad things as well to go along with all the other good and bad things associated with the romance in the movie, and it all adds up to one disappointingly mediocre package. I will say that the soundtrack is fantastic. Most of it is ambient in nature, and it really adds to the atmosphere of 
whatever scene is being portrayed on screen, be it an argument between characters or a moment where characters are taking time to think and reflect upon their actions. The music is catchy and always reflects whatever mood is being conveyed on screen, which I love. Most of this movie in general is technically well made. The cinematography is well placed, the editing is well paced, and there's even a few scenes that make good artistic use of lighting, which honestly took me by surprise. Sadly though, it was hard to appreciate those creative elements that were put into the story with all the supporting characters going around and dragging everything down with them. In my opinion, the supporting characters were by far the weakest part of this movie. A lot of the supporting characters exist purely to give one piece of information to one character during one scene and then are rarely or never heard from again thereafter. Like there's this one guy at the drama school that Yon Yon and Elizabeth go to and he's supposed to be associated with Elizabeth somehow and he's the one that tells Yon Yon that Elizabeth's mom died from cancer which first of all is weird that he would disclose that to someone that he just met and then he disappears for pretty much the rest of the movie after that. There's also this dumb side story thing going on with Yon Yon's friend Sluggo and how he's trying to woo this girl that we literally only see him with once throughout the entire movie and how he's committing acts of thievery towards high ranking criminals and I just don't care. It'd be one thing if he was trying to redeem himself but he never does so we have no reason to care about anything that happens to him in this movie. And then there's the lameness that is this movie's ending. Unless you have your eyes closed you can pretty much see this ending coming from a mile away. Obviously Obviously I'm not going to spoil it in this review, but let's just say it left a lot to be desired. Overall, JJ and E isn't technically a horrible romance movie, there are far worse ones out there anyway, but it is painfully mediocre in every sense of the word. If you enjoy romance movies and you don't have any more of them to watch in your backlog, I think you might enjoy this movie a little bit, but honestly, I recommend rewatching some classics instead. There was a lot of potential for this movie to be great, and there is still some artistic merit to it, but its uninteresting characters and flat romance make everything a dull, boring affair to sit through and watch from beginning to end. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of JJ and E. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the American action thriller, Kate. Bye-bye.